Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, okay. I was just testing mic two one two baby. Let me know what's up type thing. Yeah, we're in the next part now. Um, please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings to figure out where we where we're at over here. Uh, but in the last part, I was speaking about the defeatism of my family and how the Lord has gone before. Christ has seen it fit to give our Wi-Fi service over here a little bit of a glitch and a twitch so that it doesn't work over the weekend. All right. Uh, I imagine that Wi-Fi will be once and for all severed because of a decision that my mother made. Uh, got July. It's currently June, so July is the month where there will be no Wi-Fi once and for all, officially. I imagine. Um, I know that Vodacom's service members are coming somewhere in the week, maybe Monday or Tuesday, to fix whatever issue is hitting us now. So there will be restoration to the internet. And God gave me this information in advance because they didn't give it to me. I overheard. I overheard. My mom was speaking to my cousin on the phone, and that's how I found out that Wi-Fi is going. If I did not know this, I would have been blindsided. I would have been caught off guard because no one ever tells me anything. I would have woken up one day and tried to log on to the internet, uh, log on to YouTube, upload a video, or continue a video that was uploading, and realize that there's no internet. I would then go that side, check, hit the router, wonder what's going on, and ultimately come to discover as a couple of days are progressing with the internet or coming back that there is no internet ever coming back. And I would have been devastated only then. But God has already gone before. He made me catch wind of conversations that were being had, speaking of severing this particular service. But he has also gone before in advance to give me ways to survive the flood of insanity that is indeed going to be coming should they decide to have a season of there being no Wi-Fi. What I'm pretty certain of, however, is that Wi-Fi will be restored. Or my mother will make a decision to, to not cancel it. It's currently cancelled. She will tell Vodacom, fine, take double the premium because I cannot live without this thing. Uh, however, this is the first such hint at the devastation that they're going to feel for not having internet. It's not just about entertainment, but internet is, guys, by far one of the biggest conveniences we have on earth. Like I made mention in the previous parts, when you have internet, you're enabled to have alternative streams of income. You can make money that way. Uh, it is a place of doing research. You get to compare prices, especially considering the whole family is about to become price sensitive now, my mom in particular. So she's going to really need the internet in order to be able to survive even her retirement loneliness is one issue but so too is just ultra convenience you don't get yourself used to something as convenient as this and then with the part with the ability to be able to continue to afford it make a decision that you're going to get rid of it plus if my mother is ever so concerned about not having as grand a salary or as grand a monthly expenditure budget as she used to have she should just take the advice that i tried to give her that hey how about we come up with ways to make money online there are so many we can sell things on etsy on amazon we can sell t-shirts print on demand we can you can sell your skills given that you are like an hr executive on skillshare you can start a youtube channel and just share random basic stupid things you love to cook you can cook and have like a culinary shared channel on youtube there are so many things you can do to make sure that you're not forced to retire since South Africa has told you that you have to be out of the workforce by the age of 65. Do you understand? It's like uh, from 55 to 65 uh, in South Africa. Uh, since South Africa has made a decision that from that age you have got to get out of the workforce, if you don't want to get out, if you want to work until you're 90, then you can. Plus, nowhere in the Bible is there a prescribed retirement age. Frankly, everybody worked until they couldn't in these scriptures, until they were so sick or so old or so broken and so thing like their bones just kind of falling apart only then are they like actually in these streets bedridden doing nothing so the whole concept of retirement is a system that has been innovated by some pretty nefarious human beings in this world that want to go ahead and put an expiration date on entire human beings now that we have spoken that my mother having all these options to do better to have a way of making money making a decision not to make money and so therefore subjugate even herself to the tyranny of just an illiquid lifestyle my thing with that is it's just an insane an insanity that is reigning in your members but just in case you will one day recover from your insanity you need to be able to just google stuff you need to be able to finally be like okay Garabo, oh humility is a thing i get it uh, uh, help me like find a way to make money online like on the day when my mom decides to wear sobriety eventually whenever that will be she should be able to just open a laptop and be like where do i start 
And right now she's trying to take that away from herself. She's trying to take that away from herself. She's trying to make it such that when she now wants to say, where do I start? She got to first call somebody, like ask them how much does this cost? Wanda feel like trash for having literally no money and having to uh, part ways now with uh, an additional amount of money that she didn't want to part ways with. Like, don't get yourself used to the extra pocket change that however much you're paying for the Wi-Fi is going to be in your body. Let it continue to get taken. So you won't ever get used to having that extra for extra cash because when then you have to take it away it's gonna hurt but like i said why in the world are you trying to even tarnish the quality of your lifestyle given that you're a shopaholic because you don't want to take my advice my whole family everything i recommend they do not want to listen to me but it's okay you don't have to listen because your own body is going to speak volumes your own body is going to moan groan lament complain like a geriatric it is going to wheeze and cough like a person or suffering from coronavirus that is what your body's going to do your own body is going to say i this is hard the flesh ever I'm a Christian. I'm indwelt by the Holy Spirit. I've got this superpower called an ability to put to death the deeds of my flesh, of my body. So whatever my body needs, I can withhold from my body and I will survive the day. Christ was tempted in the flesh and told to convert a stone into bread. And his response was, man does not live by bread alone, but by the word that proceeds from the mouth of God. A Christian lifestyle is a life of self-denial. So therefore, when it comes to the flesh, out of all of the human race, we are best at basically getting over things that get taken away from us. We make like Job and we say naked we came into this world and naked we will exit. God has given another God the Lord has taken away. In all that I do, I will praise him. Christians know how to subdue the flesh to the power of the Holy Spirit. So if there is not enough food coming into the body of a Christian, they imagine they're fasting. If there is no internet coming through for a Christian, they imagine they're fasting. If there is no, I could go on. So when you take Wi-Fi away from me, you're just putting me on a different kind of fast, just not one with food. Self-denial is our mantle. This earth is not that which we hold on to. On it, we understand it is unwise to gather anything for moth and rust destroys here and thieves come in and steal. We are gathering treasures in heaven so when you take earthly things from us we adjust we adapt but you you who are in the world you don't have that superpower you don't you don't have the superpower to be able to put to death to, to put to death the deeds of your flesh and so when your flesh is yawning screaming complaining crying like a colicky baby yeah no you capitulate you feel depressed you lack a resilience that makes you be like oh i can live another day you don't have a hulk ick type you know bulky chunky orky uh superpowery like you become the incredible hulk when you're angry and so you become nice and big and green and so you adapt to all the threats around you no people on this earth that have no holy spirit do not have the power to convert themselves into the incredible hulk when there is a risk impending them around them encircling them but i am i am i become the incredible hulk you guys when anger is beside me i become this chunky big beefy green man that no one no one can subdue so i mean i dare you to come up, up against the big chunky green beefy man as one who has to deal with the fact that you are beleaguered by police all around you and they want your soul how about you these demons are going to have a field day with these people they're going to get depressed because there's no Netflix. They are going to act like drug addicts that cannot get their next fix. And my mother is going to be ever more miserated by the fact that she is now retired. There is nowhere to go. The number one cause of death in old persons that are retired is indeed just that retirement. When they retire, they start to die really quickly. But there is a way to save them. There is a way for my mom to not go out like this. And I said it. I said it. I said it, I vocalized it, I was like, you don't have to retire if you don't want to. Let's try and find alternative streams of income online for you. Let us try and make you live up until 79, instead of you just capitulating to retirement at just 65, since you are 64 this year. But she is literally trying to go out at 65, trying to go out at 64 and a half. She is trying to let this thing take her out. My aunt that is retired ended up going back to work because retirement was slapping her upside the head. I have another aunt who passed away because she retired. She was a nurse. And it was not very many years ever since her retirement that this happened. I'm trying to give my mom, like, basically get to the age of 80. Except it's not going to happen, guys. We're going home. The rapture's going to go on. The Labantu, they're going to be defeated until the end of time. That's what's going on. Mara, I'm explaining these things to you to help you get why it is even that the Lord ended up taking the church. Because all the efforts that the church tried to embark on to help you see better, do differently. You rejected them. You made this earth and sufferable for yourselves just so you could punish the church 
just so you could make the church of the lord jesus christ basically change their minds about loving jesus you you were used by your father the devil to um try and take away from the saints their their, their blessed hope their precious belief in jesus christ you 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 worked like a dog to uproot christianity out of somebody in whom it cannot be uprooted you try to take the holy spirit out of a person because you wanted them to be to walk in ways of debauchery you heap abuse on them because they have walked away from their former lives of debauchery and now that that's a thing you disquiet yourself just to disquiet the believer and so god takes them out of the way so i mean i would love for my mom to live up until the age of 88 and get to see some grandchildren but she's highly unlikely going to get there because we're first going to go home and i my mom is not the kind of person to survive a tribulation look at how bronchitis wiped her off her feet like a doting like groom on a wedding day like bronchitis wiped her off her feet because she was not eating the right foods so if at all the tribulation is going to be this environment where you know a quart of wheat for a denarius do not harm the oil and the wine uh, a, a, a day's wages for a loaf of bread given that famine is going to be a whole thing in the tribulation my mother is going to get knocked out faster than any domino by this day, by this event she's going to get taken out she's in dire need of repenting as soon as it happens because she's likely going to die from famine like highly likely she doesn't have the speed the agility to run none of that none of that marawa adela right now as we speak leave the lord to be god but you don't want to do that so god is going to prove that he's god and Baal is not god anyway whatever so since they don't want to take this counsel the lord has gone before like i said earlier and he has made sure that uh access internet access lack thereof this weekend through a glitch and a twitch is making them very sad it's eerie in the house and it's a thing that's happening over the weekend i don't know when vodacom is finally going to come through um and, and correct this issue it could be monday tuesday wednesday but by the time it comes back my prayer is that my mother will think okay so i have seen the future i've seen a glimpse into it let me do differently but that's just the thing my mother do differently never my mom does not repent until something really slaps her upside the head like it, it has to be so severely neutralizing neutralizing that she will realize that it is not in her best interest to go out like that for instance with the bronchitis issue my mother was just still continuing with the food crisis in the house until she got sick to a point where she could not move her body and she discovered she learned that what was the root cause of her sickness was the fact that she stopped bringing nutrients into her body she learned by happenstance so she has to get a lesson learned by happenstance meaning that in the run-up to the day of this epiphany that she will inevitably have i gotta find a way to survive so i suspect that it's just gonna continue to happen anyway like i imagine that there will be by first of august there will be no wi-fi she's going to push this and i spoke about it in my previous parts how it is that the wicked even though they are already enduring ramifications for their actions because they've been handed over to their reprobate minds they still hope that their evil is going to eventually pay off and because my mother unfortunately keeps on taking counsel from some of the most evil people i know my cousin because she keeps on listening to people that are destroying her face her life her future her legacy she will listen to them until it is no longer bankable to do so until it is self-destructive to do so in a way that is incredibly felt by her so i basically gotta wait for this to mow her to the ground first and that might not happen before it's dead quiet in the house yet again yet again so i am speaking in advance to let you guys know how the lord has helped me finally we get to the point to survive the impending famine there is a famine of wi-fi coming there is a famine in the land coming and when it comes god has already given me everything i need in order to survive the coming famine and he will feed me through the widow at zarapeth he will feed me through the ravens twice a day and i will make it but it's gonna be hard so the other day uh i watched this short on youtube of this white girl in the u.s that was living out of her car homeless basically and she had like a whole face beat on eyelashes were done and she was living out of her vehicle what is this thing that i want to say when she wants to take a bath or whatever she would use a public bathroom and stuff like that and i remember i, I didn't check how many subscribers she had right because i mean really with a decent number of subscribers you can get an apartment um especially if you are earning it in dollars right but nonetheless I, my response to this chick's um what do they call it the short saying uh a day in the life of a homeless woman living out of her car 
okay she was sleeping in her car she had a pet a dog a cute little um german shepherd yeah but like she was living in her car and for me it was like who has such well manicured nails living in a car who has such long eyelashes that are perfectly done living in a car and also you've got internet i mean you are able clearly to upload content on youtube you know so you've got internet and on top of that uh what do you call this thing she would eat takeouts takeaways like mcdonald's at some point she was getting it wasn't mcdonald's but it was some takeaway joint and she was eating this food she manages to feed her dog as well there is some money that this girl has and i went the, i went into the comments section ever so immediately to google they not google research find I me mean, everybody thinks i um to find stuff out research uh, or searching anything on the internet is a google but anyway i went in her comment section to see if everybody else in the comment section is with my similar mindset my mindset is this chicken homeless and if she is she has chosen to be homeless she is doing this in Defella for fun showing people and is growing her channel using this thing but she's got a home she's got somewhere where she sleeps every single night very comfortably in her bed because what in the world is she doing with these uh, full eyelashes and these fingernails these uh, manicures that her manicure was just like so on fleek and everything like her bruh. okay she didn't have a full face beat but she was out here in these streets rocking like entire falsies uh, you know with a little bit of makeup on and i was just like cheeky you are not homeless you are not homeless right i i left it at that and indeed lo and behold everybody in the comment section was like not everybody but a lot of people were like i this chick ain't homeless this chick ain't homeless like she just got a whole bunch of views purely because i imagined anyway and we all imagined anyway that she was lying well i went on right ahead to sleep after watching that well not immediately afterwards but after watching that short girl while i woke up never thought i would ever think of that girl again or see her again okay and then this morning no not this morning not this morning it was yesterday before i found out that wi-fi is being cut okay i had a vision of that girl that white chick while i was sitting here in these dry non-wi-fi conditions it was still very dead quiet yesterday with no internet running and god gave me a vision of that white girl but instead of it being that white girl it was me i was in the car with a pet with like a whole fully loaded like what's this with a whole nail manicure situation and my eyelashes were on fleek like a face beat on fleek for crying out loud, like makeup was applied on my face and i was claiming to my audience on youtube too that i'm basically basically homeless and i'm doing everything out of a car and everybody was like what kind of a person is homeless when they've got wi-fi what kind of a person is homeless when they're buying mcdonald's um for for lunch what kind of a person is homeless when their nails are so perfectly done girl you ain't homeless you've got a bed that you're sleeping in at night that you're very comfortable in but just for views this is what you're doing and god was like she was like basically in my spirit the lord was telling me that chick on the internet that says that she's homeless is she is so my suspicions of her my hypocrisy essentially against my own self god was telling me you're like that too Garabo. there are people who don't even believe you are suffering because you've got everything you need in your suffering they can see your conditions are messed up they can see you're living out of a car they can see that even the money that you're using to buy takeaway for crying out loud is because you don't have a stove on which to cook they can see that you 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 live in squalor but you keep being able to afford certain things like you've got video editing software with these kinds of special effects you've got this you've got that like you yeah well you've got a heavenly father who has got people around on the earth walking around that are treasure in jars of clay and the 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 um, the oxymoronical thing that they are when they're walking around creates a lot of cognitive dissonance in people they glitch and they spaz because they don't understand how a person can look so good and be so healthy and appear so viable and aided when they are suffering so much because people expect poverty to look a particular way they expect it to look a particular way that chick on the internet that white girl with the lashes claiming to be poor is claiming to not have her life together is I did not go and check how many subscribers she had because really and truly if you've got a certain number of subscribers on YouTube you should not not be able to get an apartment nobody and I, like, I didn't even want to check it for me I just made an immediate assumption that Lomut Lona is not homeless because there are a whole bunch of scammers on the internet but the Lord was like she is why would the Lord tell me that she is and then compare me to her uh, it is because there is a season coming where I am going to be not so much I don't imagine homeless that will never happen God knows that I can't handle that I can't take that at my stride but this chick was living in a car with her pet right and like I said she had a whole face beat my Nala nails done and eyelashes like batting them could cause a hurricane type thing the way that they were so long and that's what made me imagine that this chick is not really struggling with what it is that she claims to be struggling with and god was telling me of an impending time i was yet to find out about this issue with wi-fi 
yet to discover that that's what under heaven is going on but i now am going to similarly to that woman on youtube find myself sitting for hours on end in public accessing resources from a public space because i don't have them in my own personal capacity god was showing me that i'm gonna have to sit at a mall for hours on end on certain days just to upload content just to download content because there is going to be a famine impending you it is coming it's going to be dry but in that dry season you're going to look like you have plenty in that dry season you're going to look healthy you're going to have your eyelashes long and batting them nails done of course i don't do nails of course i don't do eyelashes and what and whatnot i don't do makeup but uh currently what you are looking at this the software that i'm using right now is exactly precisely what god gave me and it is 100 percent free he was telling me people underestimate or they judge books by their cover and so as a result they don't support them they just won't take the, the bible says in 1 corinthians 13 that love always trusts so if then a person tells you this is my life even if they look like beyonce this is their life unless you can prove it's not we have a responsibility to not paint on people a reputation that does not belong to them or another alternative reality that they are not cre a co communicating about themselves unless you have done research and validated or confirmed that someone is lying it is your responsibility biblically to trust and believe that what they're saying is true and that, that was god basically just putting me in my place realizing that it's unloving of you to claim that this girl over here on the internet is not homeless because what she needs is compassion not you saying there's no way this chick is poor indeed like literally i was such a hypocrite like when i woke up to what god was showing me i realized that i'm exactly like that woman on youtube that chick with the lashes and everything the face beat i do love i i look a particular way and as a result no one believes i'm suffering the way that i am absolutely nobody and so they are very unloving and calculating and abusive and menacing towards me and things just keep on getting worse and worse in my life and every time i come and i communicate it i am rather met with for instance a reaction of envy as opposed to compassion i am actually living this life and it is unbelievable because I go out of my way to make sure that I don't look what I represent. And that is biblical too. It's holy and observably right, according to the scriptures, to anoint yourself with oil when you are fasting. But you should, you should not, when you're praying, you shouldn't pray on the rooftop so everybody can see you. Because that's hypocritical and you've received your reward in full. That's the scriptures. When you fast, it's as if I When you fast, make sure that you are beaming. Make sure that your skin is applied on a vitamin C serum so that nobody sees that you are hungry right now. And get all the hours of sleep that you need so nobody can see the dark circles around your eyes. Put on, you know, a face of makeup. So you can hide whatever under heaven might be the obvious evidence of the fact that you are like low-key kind of malnourished at the present moment. Because then your reward in heaven is bountiful. When you pray, pray in secret where no one can see you. When you give, don't let your other hand know what's going on. That's a biblical thing. So it is holy and righteous of me to rock up here and make sure that I wear a wig every time I come to speak to you guys. So that you don't get to see my scruffy hair. To make sure that i try as best as i possibly can to anoint my face with oil that i might not look like i am in a fasted state currently i am fasting but you can't see it i eat once a day i'm currently very famished but you're not seeing a, a person that just literally could eat a burger a big fat chunky one right now you're not seeing that you're seeing a wholesome healthy woman that really has absolutely everything that they need and because of that i have received little to no compassion from people over my cause and my case for the past couple of years that's why i only get afflicted by exploitative men people don't want to believe my story even though i'm telling it and i've been telling it with consistency and my conditions in the background make it clear that i'm speaking the truth just like that girl was living in a car that you could see has got a whole bunch of things in it that she is living with yet i nonetheless decided to disregard her ecosystem her environment and her environment because she was so pretty because she was looking so good because she has such a, a face beat or like a whole bunch of makeup on her face that chick was trying not to be obviously famished and not to be obviously sorrowful and not to be obviously impoverished in front of an audience of people on YouTube 
that have historically proven themselves to be disregarding of people who don't look a particular way. It is indeed true that pretty has a privilege. People will watch you because you're pretty. So you are more likely to get views on YouTube if you put makeup on your face. You are more likely to get more views on YouTube if you make sure that your eyelashes are on fire or they beat or whatever, your face is beat. You're more likely if you're wearing a particular outfit, you're more likely if you remove your background, which is what I have done. If you remove your background of poverty on YouTube and you put some beautiful apartment, you're more likely to get views that way. Even though you are delivering a very impactful message, it's unfortunate. That's how people look at you. So why would a precious, pretty, young, white girl decide to let herself rock up with cracked up lips and lips and sunburn wreaking havoc in her mouth in her face and her looking like you know with matted hair looking like you know she just come out of a trailer park and whatnot and therefore have absolutely no pizzazz or class oozing out of her if she's trying to get off out of poverty she is trying to likely build a youtube channel so she can get out of that position out of that condition and apparently allegedly the only way to get yourself heard and regarded is if your nails are popping even though you don't have money enough of it anyway to get those popping nails is if your eyelashes are beat it's if you've got a full face of makeup so god went before where i'm concerned he compared me to that chick with the face beat because even though she's getting mocked and teased and dissed on youtube for not really being poor claiming that she is living out of her car she nonetheless got all those hundreds of thousands of views on her short because people were there to just argue whether or not this chick is actually what she says she is that was enough to get her subscribers and the lord told me you're gonna have to embark on a strategy similar to that girl so you can get yourself out of the insanity of your family the last videos that i did i was lamenting about how i want an apartment i want to get out of here in the run-up to the rapture god please give me my own place to live and i believe the lord is about to do that for me because of have helping me to discover things that operate function very well without internet next part <laughs>